Imagine reading a poet's mud-stained letters sent from the trenches of the First World War, or seeing Wilfred Owen and Robert Graves' scribbles on the original manuscripts of their famous war poems, or looking through the pages of Edward Thomas's war diary. All this and much more is now possible via the First World War Poetry Digital Archive. The archive brings together primary source material from the major poets of the Great War. Wilfred Owen, Isaac Rosenberg, Edward Thomas, Robert Graves, Vera Britton and her fiancé, Roland Leighton. It includes their poetry manuscripts, service records, war diaries and correspondence sent while they were on active service. At the heart of the collection is the manuscripts of the six featured poets. Many of these were in a fragile condition and access to them was restricted. Now they are preserved, freely accessible to all and multiple drafts of the same poems can be compared side by side. This makes the resource invaluable to scholars as the archive project manager Kate Lindsay explains. One of the key features of the First World War Poetry Digital Archive is that it can bring together dispersed collections of manuscripts. Often a poet's manuscripts are, are not in one archive, they're dispersed in archives over the world, across continents, um, within different libraries and within personal collections. And we have digitised all these manuscripts and brought them back together in one place. For example, Wilfred Owen's Anthem for Doomed Youth. There are seven versions of this manuscript that actually exist. And because Wilfred Owen was killed in battle, his poetry was never published in his lifetime. So what the editors did after his death was pour over these manuscripts and look at the crossings out and look at the poetical notes and came up with what they thought would be the final version. But this is not necessarily correct because the poet wasn't around to tell us this. Now what researchers, students, teachers, lecturers can do is actually look at these seven different versions of the manuscript, compare them next to each other and see how a poet actually came to formulate his work. The manuscripts can also reveal the conditions under which the First World War soldier lived and worked. The poet Isaac Rosenberg was a private who spent three years in the trenches of the Western Front among the mud and rats. The immediacy of the trench experience echoes not only through his words but also through the condition of his manuscripts. He didn't have access to good quality paper or even pens. He would often write on scraps of receipt with pencil and his work would get wet and muddy in his knapsack. This manuscript, written on printed Salvation Army paper, torn and stained with mud, is a pencil draft with opening lines related to the poem Daughters of War. Equally poignant is the archive's collection of letters. This was the last letter home written by the war poet Wilfred Owen. It was sent just a few days before he was killed in action in France at the age of 25 on the 4th of November 1918. But the archive is not just about the famous literary names of the First World War. The poetry resource is placed within the wider context of the war as it affected the ordinary men and women of the time. There is video and audio from the Imperial War Museum, alongside both official and amateur photographs. These provide an extraordinary visual account of the conflict. Personal tales of the war are on offer too, through the Great War Archive. The general public were invited to send in digital versions of memorabilia originating from the First World War, or stories that had been passed down through their families. The Great War Archive now contains over 6,500 items and these are the stories and experiences of the average soldier and of the average woman left at home, as Kate Lindsay describes. We've been sent images of photographs with bullet holes through them um, which were returned in, in a woman's husband's belongings after he was killed on the Western Front and the bullet actually went through the photograph of his baby son who had never seen. We've been sent um, photographs of tea tins which have been dented and have actually saved someone's life because they've been in their, their knapsack whilst they were on the Western Front and they deflected a, a bullet. 
we've been sent diaries from Gallipoli, we've been sent um, postcards, love letters, uh, photographs, um, Christmas concert brochures, we've, we've been sent anything you can think of we have in the Great War Archive. The Archive is an invaluable educational resource and teachers and students are supported in their use of it with a range of specially developed educational materials from tutorials to podcasts. The First World War is still an incredibly popular subject that is studied at school and at university level. It is inbuilt into the curriculum in key stages three and four, and at university level it spans a range of subjects, of course literature, of course history, but also subjects like media studies, women's studies, economics, geography, sociology. The First World War really did touch on every aspect that today that makes society what it is. What the archive does is it provides interesting, exciting visual content that teachers, students, lecturers can use copyright free to enhance and enrich the studies of the First World War and the literature that it inspired. The First World War Poetry Digital Archive is funded by JISC, the Joint Information Systems Committee.